Welcome to Grabback Scout Campsite, home of High Peak Scouting's Wallabury Camp. My name's Peter from Red Oak Bushcraft and I'm here to take you on a wander around the site to introduce you to some of the trees here and tell you some of their uses. There are two main types of trees, deciduous, also known as broadleaf, and coniferous or evergreens. The difference between the two is that deciduous drop their leaves during the autumn whereas coniferous drop their needles a few at a time throughout the year, so appear to always have no change. Let's go find some. So this tree is the oak. The leaves on the oak can grow up to 10 centimetres long. Uh, the, this one is quite small because it's still relatively uh, fresh in the season for it. But they're quite distinctive because they have four or five of the lobes around the side, uh, which you know, no other tree really has. The leaves come from the buds. The buds form in clusters, brown clusters uh, on the ends of the branches, uh, and that's fairly distinctive as well. And obviously from uh, the, the tree we also get the acorns. The oak tree can grow up to about 40 meters. Uh, younger trees bark starts off quite smooth and greyish uh, but as it gets older it grows more grey and becomes really furrowed and starts to contort the branches around quite a lot. The oak's been built the building block for houses and ships and furniture for hundreds of years and the wood is very hard and strong and trees can grow for over 800 years. It's a great wood for cooking on, giving lots of heat. Acorns can be made into flour for making bread as well. So this tree is the alder. The leaves on the alder are typically conical in shape. This isn't a very good example, unfortunately. Uh, and they're formed from grey, grey purple-grey buds. The older is male and female catkins, and the female ones turn into a, a cone-like seed, uh, and the male catkins hang down uh, and are purple turning to yellow. The older trunk itself, uh, it loves damp ground, so it's a really good indicator of water. And it's frequently found by rivers and swampy areas. The bark is dark with occasionally orange markings when you get a bit closer to it. Uh, Twigs are light brown with a spotted stem and sometimes sticky to the touch. As all the light stamps ground, it's a good indicator of water, as I've said, and the wood doesn't rot when it's in water, but gets stronger and harder, so it's been used to make jetties and piers over the years. So this is the Scots pine. It's one of the uh, coniferous trees, so it comes with needles, and the needles on the pine typically come in pairs. So the easiest way to remember it is pears and pine. The flowers are yellow and short and come in these little stacks like this. Now these are past their best now, they're going to the pollen stage. The cones that form are small and green and then turn into the brown uh, cones that we're well, we, we see frequently and then they open to release the seeds. The actual trunks themselves can grow to about 35 metres and near the top, you probably can't see it that well, but near the top they start to turn orangey red, so that's a really good way of differentiating it from things like the coarse pine, which we'll see later. One advantage of a pine tree is that it, the sap in it is a resin, so it's highly flammable. And the resin you can typically see uh, if there's been a scar on it. So this is quite a pale, crusty resin, so this is dried, uh, but you will get a, a quite a, a clear trickle of uh, fluid coming down you can scrape that off and if you can get a spark or a match to it it'll light it burns really well the wood itself burns really fast uh, so it's really good for getting a fire going but not that good for cooking on so this tree is the ash tree the leaves on the ash come on a long stalk and are in pairs up until the end where they have a single leaf. There's usually between 9 and 13 leaves on a stalk. The bud on the ash tree is coal black. It's pretty unique in that thing. Uh, the leaves are similar to elder and rowan but we'll look at those and we'll like, compare them shortly. The trunk of the ash when it's young is a grey green and quite smooth but as it grows older it becomes much more ridged and uh, uh, rough. Branches come off in opposing pairs, so that's another good indicator. Again, the sycamore is very similar to that, but has different buds which we'll talk about. It's a fantastic tree 
the wood in it is very very straight grained it's one that you can actually burn while it's green uh, which is unusual it gives off a fair amount of heat for that it's been used for building for hundreds of years and was used during medieval times for longbows this tree is the sycamore the leaves of the sycamore are palmate which means they're shaped like a hand with five lobes Buds from the sycamore are green in colour and they grow close to the branch and the seeds are the twin-winged helicopters forming alongside each other and spin down as the autumn comes along. They can grow up to 40 metres high. Young trees have a smooth grey-green coloured smooth bark but as they grow older the bark frequently forms in great cracking flakes. It can be up to this sort of size. Um, branches form in opposing pairs similar to the ash. Twigs are pinky brown and hairless. And if you park underneath a sycamore, your car will typically end up with a sticky mess on it from the green fly that feed on its sap. Uses of it, it's a really good wood to whittle with, as it's a member of the maple family. When the sap starts flowing in the early spring, it has a high sugar content and can be collected as a slightly sweet drink. The wood also makes a good hearth for friction fire lighting. So this is the rowan or mountain ash. The leaves form on long stalks in pairs, with a single one at the, the end. There's usually between five and eight pairs on a stalk. The leaf edges are serrated. As you can see, they're very similar to the ash. The difference being that the ash is much lighter and larger, uh, and as I said before, that the leaves on the rowan are very much serrated. The buds are hairy all over, and the flowers that grow are creamy in colour and form in dense clusters. The berries that form turn to orange and, and then red, uh, and they form in August, being one of the earliest fruiting trees. The bark is typically a silver grey in colour, and they typically grow straight up into about 15 metres in height. When the branch is cut, the wood quickly turns orange as the sap oxidises. A really good use of this is that the berries uh, make some really good jam. So this is the elder. The leaves form on long stalks in pairs with a single one at the end and typically between five or seven on the stalk. They look like the ash or the rowan and the flowers are flat top clusters that form at the end of May start of June and the berries form from the flowers in late September. The tree can grow quite tall and have long thin branches uh, with a distinctive rough finish. The core has a soft centre called pith. Uses of it, the flowers can be made into a great cordial, the berries can be made into an excellent syrup packed with vitamins, or even a wine. Long straight branches can be used for friction fire as a hand drill, the original rubbing two sticks together. So this is the Corsican or black pine. The needles come in pairs, as we've already said, uh, but they're much longer than the Scots pine. If we put the two together, you can see how much bigger they are. The flowers are yellow and form into cones, very similar to the Scots pine. The trees can grow really fast, between 30 and 60 centimetres in a year. And the, the trunks are typically greyish brown with, and quite ridged. The actual branches themselves uh, form with quite defined scales on them, they're very rough, a little bit like a snake, looking like a snake skin. As with the other pines, the resin is flammable and can be seen where a branch has been knocked off or either oozing out of a, or dried as a white crusty deposit. It burns well, but fast, so good for getting a fire going, but not for cooking on. The pine resin has been gathered, mixed with charcoal to create a glue, and pine is a soft wood which a lot of furniture is now made from. So this tree is the spruce tree. The spruce is another coniferous tree that forms needles uh, and these form in singles, uh, are quite spiky, particularly if you run your fingers down the branch. So it's a really easy way of remembering it is single, spiky, spruce. The fresh growth forms as a vivid green tip on the end of it and it's quite a sweet smell. The flowers form a red, reddish yellow colour and then they form the cones which are long and slim with diamond shaped scales on them. The, tr the tree itself can grow to about 40 metres and is your typical Christmas tree. They're typically planted close together, so as they grow taller, 
the branches below get less sunlight and die off. As with the all pines, spruce is a flammable resin and as the lower branches die, they form really, really good firewood and frequently stay dry even in heavy rain because they're protected by the canopy above. So this tree is the larch. It's got lots of little needles that come out of lumps on the bark itself. And that's an easy way to remember this tree is because it's, if you work off the L's, it's got lots of little needles that come off lumps, and that's the larch. It also has cones, and when these first start to form, they're purple in colour and then turn to the brown. This is a very different coniferous tree to most in that during the winter and autumn, the needles turn brown and fall off. So quite often you'll see these trees with lots of lumpy bits and long pendulous branches uh, without any needles on them. They look dead, but they're totally alive. They just drop their needles. The trunk of the larch is tall and straight, typically, uh, and can grow up to 30 metres. It's got very furrowed markings in the actual trunk itself, so it's quite distinctive. And the branches, as we've already seen, are quite pendulous and droop down. Uh, when the, the branches are dead, they're really, really useful because they start off quite thin and then get thicker and thicker. So from a fire lighting point of view, these are fantastic because you get lots of really thin stuff to start your fire with and then you've got thicker stuff as you go along. So it's a really good one for uh, starting a fire with, one of my favourites. Uh, the roots for the tree can be very, very long and thin uh, and so you can use them as string almost. So that's the larch. So this tree is the hazel. The leaves on the hazel are round to oval, toothed with a pointed tip and quite hairy to touch. The buds are roundish and form along the twig. The yellow catkins which form on the, before the leaves hang in clusters and the fruit is the hazelnut packed with protein. The actual tree itself can grow up to 12 metres but is typically coppiced back, cut down to allow it to grow in nice straight sections. The branches have quite peeling bark on, but unlike the birch, they don't have any great oils in them, so they're not that useful for fire lighting. However, the branches themselves are fantastic for all sorts of things. So a branch this sort of size would be made into a bow for friction fire lighting, or you could use the straighter sections for camp gadgets, and it's been used to weave and make hurdle fences from. So this is the silver birch. The leaves are small, light green and triangular shaped with a toothed edge. Buds are small brown and form on the main branch and catkins form in April and May. The male catkin is long, yellowy brown, while the female catkins are smaller, shorter and bright green. The tree can grow up to about 30 metres and as you can see the, the bark is silvery white. The younger trees, it can be orange and flakes off, as you can see here. The twigs are very long and slim and is one of the best bushcraft trees going. They're fantastic for getting a fire going. They also make really good springy bed if you get the really thin ones and are traditional bristles for witches' brooms. The bark has natural oils in it which make it excellent for fight starting a fire and it comes off in really thin pieces. However, you shouldn't pick it or use a knife as you can see, somebody here has ringed this tree and that can damage the tree. It's not good for it at all. What you should do is just use the hand, the palm of your hand, just to brush it. And if it comes off, that's great. But really don't gouge at it because you will damage the tree. Early spring, sap can be tapped to a drink, to make a drink or to make into a syrup. Not as sugary as maple, but it still does a good job. The bark has been used to make canoes by Native American Indians. So this is the field maple. Again, this maple is a, a palmate one, so it's got the five lobes. And as you can see, it's much smaller than the sycamore. This is a small example, so the leaves would be bigger, but they are definitely rounder uh, and totally different. The buds that grow are gray and grow on long stems, whereas the buds on a sycamore are green and actually fit on the actual branch. The seeds are again helicopters, but they go out at horizontal from each other and can be tinged with pink. 
The trees themselves can grow up to about 20 metres, and the bark is a light brown and flaky. Twigs are slender and brown and become corky with age. It's a good general wood and will make a good hearth for friction fire lighting. It doesn't have much sugar as it's Canadian cousin, so you can't make maple syrup from it. So I hope you've enjoyed learning about some of the trees at Grab Batch. There's a lot more than what we've shown you, but that's just some of them and their uses. We're going to be running a little competition over the weekend of the camp, which information will be sent out to you nearer the time. Uh, and there will be a prize for it. 